Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we're going to do something that appears very simple, the vertical oscillator, but we're going to do it in a way that's different from what we normally do. Normally the equilibrium point is at the point where the, the force of the spring is balanced by the gravitational force. But here what we're going to do is we're going to say that when x equals zero at the equilibrium point, the spring is unstretched. So if that's the case and you let go, at that moment there will be an acceleration downward because of the acceleration due to gravity. Well, if we're going to solve the problem that way, instead of using our typical equation where we solve for the Lagrangian and then we go through the operation here, we need to write the equation like this. Now, in the case where the spring is stretched, and where there's a balance between the force of the spring and the force of gravity, then we're going to use this equation. So instead, we're going to use this equation. The approach is roughly the same. We're first going to find the kinetic energy, then the potential energy, but then plug it directly into this equation rather than into this equation. So, first of all, the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is going to be equal to one half mv squared, and of course, v can be written as x dot, so this is one-half mx dot squared. The potential energy comes in two parts. The first one is in the spring being stretched. And notice that will be one-half kx squared, where x, as you notice that this is the highest point in its motion, and x will then be positive in the downward direction when we move away from the equilibrium point, and the potential energy caused by the spring being stretched is going to be one-half kx squared. But also, we're losing height, but we're losing height in this direction, so if we go upward, we're gaining height. If we go downward, we're losing height, but notice that we have x positive in the down direction. So the potential energy gained or lost by motion in the vertical direction will be minus mgx. When x increases, we have less and less potential energy as we go down, so therefore the minus instead of the plus. Now we have the kinetic energy and we have the potential energy, and now we're going to plug that into this equation. So first we need to find the partial of kinetic energy with respect to x dot. So the partial of the kinetic energy with respect to x dot is equal to the partial of this with respect to x dot, which gives us mx dot. And then if we take the time derivative of that, the ddt, of the partial of the kinetic energy with respect to x dot, and that will therefore give us mx double dot. And notice that that is exactly the same thing as we would have gotten if we had used this technique with the Lagrangian. But now the next part is going to be different, because now we're going to take the partial of the kinetic energy with respect to x. And notice that if we do that, we end up with zero. All right? And then we're going to take the partial derivative of the potential energy with respect to x, and that means this right here. So the partial derivative, well, I'll just write it, the partial derivative of the kinetic energy with respect to x, we know that was equal to zero because notice there's no x in this expression, and now the partial derivative of the potential energy with respect to x is going to be equal to two times one half, which is one kx, and minus mg. And now we're ready to plug that into this equation. So this is therefore the first part which we have over here, which is mx double dot minus the partial derivative of kinetic energy with respect to x, so it's minus zero, and then plus this part right here which is kx minus mg and that equals zero. Now, cleaning that up just a little bit and dividing both sides by m, we get x double dot plus k over m x minus g equals zero. Or if I bring this across the other side, I can say that x double dot, which is the acceleration, is equal to minus k over m x plus g. So either way, this is a good format of the equation. But in this format, since this is the acceleration, we can try to make some sense of it. When x equals zero, then this term goes to zero, and the acceleration equals g. 
Now remember, G is a positive 9.8 in the negative direction, and so sure enough, if X equals zero, and you let things go, and the, sprit is on, the spring is on stretch, it will accelerate downward at that moment, A equals G, because the spring offers no resistance whatsoever. But then as X begins to grow, it's going to reduce the acceleration by minus K over MX. So as X gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the spring pulls back and the acceleration will diminish until there's an equilibrium point, until this is equal to this, then of course the, the object will overshoot that point, get to a lower point and begins to oscillate back and forth like this. So that therefore makes sense, this equation, and you can see that that is a great way to solve this using kind of an aberration of the Lagrangian technique, but that's why we did a video on it so you can see how that works.